call to order the July 18th, 2018 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Roll call, please. Katharina Barbie. Here. Vicki Buckley. Here. David Castro. Here. Matthew Krull. Deborah Neer. Here. Jerry Wright. Chair Christina Doe. Here. Approval of the agenda. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? And if none, I'll take a motion. So, so moved. moved. <coughs> so moved by Buckley, seconded by Barbie. Mm -hmm. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Approval of minutes, we do not have any minutes to approve. So we move on to the public participation portion of the meeting. This is for anyone who would like to speak on anything that is not part of the agenda. If so, you're welcome to go to the podium. There being none, I move on to new business. The first item is a public hearing. It's the petition by Northern Illinois Hotels LLC represented by Pramit Patel and Elmer Larson Incorporated owner for approval of zoning map amendment from the LC Light Commercial District to the PDC Plan Development Commercial District and approval of a plan development plan for a 2.87 acre site located at the southwest corner of Knowles Avenue South and South Annie Glidden Road. Proposed is a 90 room home to, home to suites by Hilton Hotel and associated improvements. And I open the floor to the petitioners. If you'd like to come to the podium, state your name and address, and um, then take your seat. Hi, my name is Pramit Patel. My address is 1660 North Claremont Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. You're welcome to pull the microphone up a bit. Okay. Yes, can everyone hear me? I just want to go over kind of introduce ourselves and who we are. Um, we're Northern Illinois Hotels LLC along with Hillcrest Development are looking to develop a 90 room home two suites by Hilton on lot 302 of the Knowles subdivision. Okay. My name is Pramit Patel. I'll be the owner operator of the hotel. I have over 15 years experience developing, operating, and managing hotels. I'm the current owner of the Hampton Inn on Hanning Glen Road and also an NIU graduate. Albert Hill, who will be handling construction management, has 30 plus years developing hotels. He's built over 100 hotels, including the Hampton Inn and the Super 8 in DeKalb. He's also an NIU graduate along with his wife and son. So the question is why DeKalb needs another hotel? We had a professionally conducted market study that identified a need for an upper mid-scale and or extended stay hotel in DeKalb. The Hampton Inn is the only hotel that's a non-economy brand in all of DeKalb and it's limited to 80 rooms. There are multiple corporations and demand generators that, that are looking for upper mid-scale tier hotels for their corporate travelers. Some of those include Nestle, 3M, Monsanto, Goodyear, Target, and the list goes on, and these are just some of them. Between the two business parks located within DeKalb and Sycamore, there are a lot more companies uh, that do produce. DeKalb has seen good economic growth from its corporations in the last few years, but it does not have enough quality rooms to accommodate the growth. Ideal Industries completed a new $18 million manufacturing plant. 3M opened its new $40 million distribution center. Target recently completed a $50 million conversion of its regional distribution center, doubling the number of employees from 350 to 700. Solotech is a new company that located to DeKalb and is now leasing a 72,000 square foot warehouse. And Tate and Lyle completed a $1.5 million expansion. And what we found out is once a Hampton Inn uh, reaches a sellout, which is about three to four times a week, eight months out of the year, the guests that work in DeKalb end up going to neighboring towns to stay in those hotels and spending and contributing to the, that, those cities' economy. 
because usually a typical corporate traveler that chooses a Hilton or Marriott product will not stay at a Red Roof Inn or Super 8. So they go to neighboring towns. They'll end up staying at a Holiday Inn Express or Fairfield or another Hampton. Now, what benefits a new hotel will bring into DeKalb? So it'll bring about $205,000 in property taxes with 160 going towards the school district each year, 150 in hotel motel, 150,000 in hotel motel tax each year. It'll generate 20 to 30 new jobs. The, the project will cost about $11 million, which is $11 million in construction re revenue for the city of DeKalb. Now we want to contain as much of this growth from a project like this within the community. So we're using local banks to fund the project. We're using local consultants and companies for development. And we want to help entice corporations to consider DeKalb for their next location. We can provide the accommodations that their employees need. Now, Home Two Suites is, uh, is a brand made by Hilton. It's a modern, upscale, upper mid-scale extended stay. And it's a lot like the sister hotel, the Hampton, except it features a full kitchen in each of the rooms. The home two suites will also carry the same price range that the, that the Hampton Inn carries, which is about $130 to $180 per night. Guests can choose to stay for one night or seven nights. Just because it's an extended stay, there's no restrictions on the minimum number of nights a guest can stay there. It's geared for the individual corporate traveler, and it's also a select service hotel, which means it won't have a restaurant or a bar. It's an eco-conscious development. Hilton has taken great measures to minimize the environmental impact that each of these properties produce. It includes a saline-based swimming pool, appliances that are Energy Star rated, lighting for uh, CFL lighting, breakfast, there's no plastic utensils for breakfast, um, also includes a lot of recycled materials. The carpet's made from 60% recycled materials. Uh, has dual flush toilets, which save about 20% water. It's also one of Hilton's fastest growing brands. Currently, there's 215 locations in North America and Canada. There's 140 under construction right now, and another 268 planned for development. And here's an example build uh, that a home to in a different city. Now, the exterior of the one that we're proposing is going to match pretty similar to what the Hampton is, using the same uh, materials and facade. There's a picture of uh, the inside lobby of the hotel as well. And then a one bedroom suite and then the saline based swimming pool. And he uh, here's the vicinity map where we're pr proposing the hotel to be built. Renderings and then sideways. Um, here's a rendering of what we're proposing. And they're displayed here as well. Now, I'd like to call up Mark from Wendler, Wendler Engineering to discuss the site plan in further detail. Good evening. My name is Mark Gebhardt. I'm with Wendler Engineering, uh, 698 Timber Creek Road in Dixon. Sure. Um, I'm the civil engineer on the project. And so I'd like to talk to you about a few features on the site. Um, we will be providing stormwater detention in accordance with uh, the city code in full compliance out front here. Um, we have an entrance off of South Knowles Avenue. And uh, the reason we did that is because on the South Annie Glidden Road corridor, access is restricted. Um, so we weren't allowed to have an entrance on to uh, directly to Annie Glidden. Also, South Knowles Avenue is too close to, uh, to have an entrance there, even if there was no restriction. 
um, there's been suggestions that maybe we could connect this site with the Hampton Inn site and uh, we reviewed that but there's a few issues with that uh, one there's floodplain in between the two properties wetlands and uh, Kermit does not own the land in between this site and the Hampton site. The land in between is owned by the Park District. Um, one of the recent changes that we made to the site plan uh, as a result of the comments that we received from the city is previously we had eight parking stalls back here along the, the west property line. We have removed those and uh, eliminated them so that we don't have cars coming in there parking in that area. And we're also proposing additional landscaping and an eight foot fence along that west property line. Um, there's water main sanitary sewer adjacent to the site that we'll be connecting to. And uh, we're also adding a left turn lane on South Knowles Avenue into the site. Uh, with that, I will turn it over to Michael. Uh, good evening. My name is Michael Worthman. I'm a principal at the firm of Kenick Linger and O'Hara Boone Inc. KLOA Inc. We're a traffic and transportation engineering firm out of Rosemont, Illinois. Uh, I was retained to perform the traffic study uh, for the proposed hotel. Um, as you've heard, uh, it will be a business hotel, uh, 90 rooms, and approximately 100 parking spaces. Um, just a little information on the site, as you've heard, uh, under the, its existing zoning, it is a light commercial district. Uh, this was zoned as part of the overall of the subdivision, the master plan of that sub subdivision. So it has been zoned for a while for a similar type use. And uh, access has always been anticipated from the location where, we're, where the access drive is proposed, uh, given the medium break uh, that was designed as part of the development. Um, as it pertains to the volume of traffic that will be generated, um, a couple of things that should be known that will help reduce the volume of traffic is one, this is a business hotel. It's not going to have any extra amenities like restaurants or bars that typically generate more uh, traffic. It will have uh, very limited meeting rooms, so you're not going to have major events here. It's a business hotel. The other interesting thing uh, within the hotel industry is most hotels have an average occupancy of 70, 75%. So while the hotel will be fully occupied on some days, other days it will be less than 50%. So it's not at 90 rooms, 365 days out of the year. Um, as you've heard, access to the site will be provided via the single access drive um, on Knowles Avenue South, um, right at the existing median break in Knowles Avenue. Uh, this is where the access drive for this site uh, was always anticipated. Um, it will provide one lane in and one lane out. Uh, one of the changes we've made in the last couple days in response to uh, what we've been hearing from the neighbors and other issues and concern is that the outbound access drive will be a right turn out only via striping and signage. So all exiting traffic will have to go right to a Annie Glidden Road and will not be allowed to go back into the neighborhood. So we'll sign that for a right out only. Um, as part of the development, there'll be a couple improvements to Knowles, as you've heard. We will provide a separate eastbound left turn lane into that median. We're also looking at modifying and replacing that landscaping in the median to provide better sight distance as you come in and out of Knowles and in and out of the uh, access drive. Um, 
Overall, the roadway system operates uh, relatively well in this area. We did our counts out in February when the schools were in session. We looked at the morning peak hour, the midday peak hour, the evening peak hour, and a Saturday midday peak hour. So we looked at four different periods. Um, the intersection of Knowles and Annie Glidden works at a very acceptable level of service. All of the movements work well. The volume coming out of Knowles is relatively low uh, in the traffic world. Uh, there's more than sufficient capacity to accommodate that additional traffic that will be generated by the hotel. Um, the city asked us as part of the traffic study to do a traffic signal warrant study at that intersection to see if the volumes were high enough for a traffic signal. And at, at this time, and even with the hotel, they, the volumes are not high enough to warrant a traffic signal there. It's working well under the existing stop sign control. And uh, we looked at the accident data and so did your police department. I think there's been six accidents in the last five years in a five year period, which is very low. That's about one a year. Um, I will be here for any questions that you have and thank you for the time. We received a lot of uh, comments from the city staff and I'd like just to mention that as you see in your packets that we're planning to either make the changes or already had made the changes to accommodate all those uh, comments from the city staff. Okay. Thank you. I open to the city. Yeah, just a few follow-up items from the uh, staff report uh, from what the applicant mentioned. Um, the property is in the South Annie Glidden Road uh, corridor overlay zoning district. It is zoned light commercial and has been zoned that since the development of the Knowles uh, subdivision. So the South Annie Glidden Road corridor standards do establish guidelines for that whole area on South Annie Glidden. Uh, there's a copy in your packets regarding those guidelines. There were two uh, neighborhood open houses or a, also a ward meeting at late June and then on July 14th hosted by Alderman Verbeek in that area allowed the residents to chance to view the plans, ask questions, make comments, and then they were also advised about the public hearing uh, tonight. Um, as mentioned, uh, we have, um, the applicant has responded regarding some staff comments were provided to them last week. Uh, they have, and that's provided in front of you on your dais, uh, response from them. They did not have time to revise the plans. At this time, they're indicating that they'll uh, comply with the comments uh, that were noted. Um, so those were reviewed by staff, the city engineer, the uh, police department, fire department, uh, water reclamation district, and also the DeKalb Park District. Um, as I mentioned, most of the comments are minor. The few things one was mentioned about the uh, West uh, property line there abuts a residential home, residential district in the Knowles. Uh, the plan development, there is a 50 foot buffer area required in the UDO between non-residential and adjacent residential districts. Uh, the buffer area is defined in the UDO noting that it's a strip of land that's protect one use from a, another land use that's incompatible. And normally that area is landscaped and kept in open space. The UDO does note that in that 50 foot buffer area there can be no parking it's not specific on other improvements such as uh, a driveway or a patio or a fence or a um, dumpster enclosure. The building's about 80, just over 80 feet away from that west property line, so that's not an issue with the building. Um, so we advise the applicant to either move everything to the east to get that 50 foot buffer, and they've indicated that based on the floodplain and detention area, they can't move it. What they have done is um, uh, relocated or moved eight parking spaces on that west line and also relocated to the north the dumpster area. Uh, we were actually looking for the dumpster area to be moved further to the east, at least on the east half of the property somewhere. Um, and they did move it just to the north. So, um, so there's still some things with the uh, plans. They need to be revised. According to the comments, they're indicating that they will meet those. A couple other things regarding the uh, uh, the corridor standards. One is there's a max floor area ratio 
uh, for that corridor of 0.4, they're at about 0.47 uh, with their layout. The standards do allow an increase of 0.10 if they meet six of, I think, about a dozen standards. And they will be providing that information to the city, showing that they meet those standards. Um, the building height's about 45 feet, and then they do have a parapet and a area in the top, a crown that increases about nine more feet. So part of the building exceeds the max height for the plan development standards. Uh, the corridor standards do allow an increase of height of 10 feet if you meet a uh, minimum of six of these standards, which they do have to show. Uh, they did request a waiver for the building height in their public hearing notice. Um, architectural standards, there were some standards approved for the Hampton Inn, uh, particularly for that based on the Anage Road and South Corridor standards. Uh, we're recommending that those, if approved, be part of this too. The exterior elevations, they showed some renderings uh, earlier, uh, be 50% brick and stone, 20% glazing, and 30% EFIS or drive it. Uh, so for the project approved, we'd recommend those same architectural standards for Hampton Inn as for this building. Uh, the applicants, as mentioned, they submitted an engineering plan and are complying with the stormwater regulations. There's some, there are no waivers are requested uh, but they need to revise their plans to address some final comments on that. Uh, we do have our city engineer, Greg Chismark with WBK, over to my left here, if there's any questions on uh, engineering regarding the traffic or the engineering stormwater questions. The park district did provide a couple comments. One, that they were looking to have the area on the east side of the site around the proposed detention area, more native plantings instead of the turf grass, which they showed, so the applicants agreed to do that. Uh, the Park District did mark up a plan that's on your dais that shows in red what their area they're looking for the native plantings to be on. Uh, so they'll need, they and they've responded to the applicant that they'll address that issue and pr uh, show native plantings in those areas. Um, traffic analysis was, a uh, study was done in March as noted by the applicant and in February um, and reviewed by the city or city engineer. As noted, the signal warrant uh, was conducted. There was no warrants for a traffic signal uh, based on the number of trips and the existing and future traffic. Um, that there's a good level of service currently at the intersection and no other improvements beyond what they've shown on Knowles Avenue, which includes a turn lane into the uh, median, and then they'll be removing the landscaping in the median and putting in new low growth landscaping to increase the visibility uh, at the entrance proposed. Um, regarding the access to into the site, uh, the uh, Annie Glidden the South standards require 660 foot separation between entrances on Annie Glidden. And the distance between Knowles Avenue South and the entrance to Hampton Inn to the south is 700 feet, so there's no room for another entrance uh, between there. Um, also with the connection to Hampton Inn has been uh, mentioned, and as the uh, applicant noted, there's issues of crossing the floodplain, a wetland, uh, the park district site. They don't own the property between there. The park district does. And the Hampton Inn was not designed or set up to for cross access to this particular lot. Um, we did provide uh, accident data from 2013 to 2017 at the intersection of Annie Glen Road and Knowles Avenue. That's provided by the police department. Uh, that was provided in your packets there. Um, so far as a week ago, there was no accidents in 2018, uh, but the data shows, and Deputy Chief John Prechigallo did mention that uh, he feels there is no safety issue at the intersection at this time. Uh, also, we did provide a, uh, the service calls at the Hampton Inn uh, to the police department from uh, 2015 to uh, July 2018. That's in your packets, too, just providing those numbers. And Chief Flowers indicated from those numbers that there's little demand for service regarding the Hampton Inn that is criminal in nature. So that information is provided to you. Uh, regarding public safety too, with they're requesting a plan development and uh, which we would, if approved, would be a development agreement. So the plan development gives the city more control over the future development of this site, including such things uh, regarding public safety as a no trespass and traffic enforcement agreement. Uh, we can also require common area surveillance, video cameras inside and outside the hotel, and also that they be linked to the police department so they can be remotely monitored 
from our police department. We do that in other, have done that in other commercial projects such as Cornerstone where we have these requirements in there. So that can be done through a plan development, development agreement. Uh, citizen response comments. We did receive two written comment forms from uh, Lyndon Preston Chrysler of 1222 Mason Street and Dennis Smigalski, hopefully I got that name right, and Janice and Nicole Gorham of 122 Knowles Avenue South indicating their opposition to the proposal. Also a couple emails um, noting their opposition to the project from Sydney and Kyle Zoon of 652 Plum Street and Steve Brown of 1231 Mason Street. Uh, those are provided in your packets and made part of the record. Um, also since the packet went out Friday, we also received and you have in front of you tonight a uh, letter of support from the DeKalb Chamber of Commerce for the hotel and also a letter uh, email indicating as a su support from John Laskowski, a resident of DeKalb. And there was also a follow-up email we received this afternoon from the uh, Sydney and Kyle Zoon with a follow-up comment to the original email. So those are made part of the record too. So uh, based on the fact that we do have you know, quite a few speakers here tonight, the applicant needs to revise their plans to address some remaining comments. We have several handouts that came in after the packet went out uh, for you to go through. So uh, our recommendation due to those items is to have the hearing tonight and then continue the hearing uh, to their next commission meeting on August 8th, uh, where then we'll be able to have a full recommendation from staff and then allow the opportunity for more input and then uh, final deliberations by the commission. And there's a sample motion in the packet if you wish to do that. So before we get started, I saw some other individuals enter the room. Are there any other um, citizen comment forms that have not been turned in yet before we start the public hearing? Okay. We got those included. So I now open the public um, hearing remind um, I have three requests up here and remind everyone that the comments should be to the um, proposal at hand that's on our consideration and the first one I have is Steve Brown sorry I wasn't sure if that was Bowen or Brown um, when you come up if you could come to the podium state your name and address please My name is Steve Brown. My address is 1231 Mason Street, pretty much right across the street from it. I'm the second house on the east side of Mason. My house backs up to the park. Um, one thing I've noticed in everything that's here, nobody has mentioned the proximity to the playground that was just installed to the hotel. Nobody seems to mention the fact that there's a jogging path that goes along here and these, and I see that they have removed, there will be no, uh, no left turn anymore? Okay, so they've removed that. That takes one problem up. And they said they did their uh, traffic study in February, which is in the winter. Okay, but w does anybody pay attention to what happens on Annie Glidden Road when there is something going on at the Convocation Center? or at commencement time. We had, uh, I think the alderman told us there were 22 commencements held at NIU. Being a resident there, I can tell you that when that happens, you cannot get down Annie Glidden Road. You are stifled. The only way to go out is to go through the subdivision and go out the other exit on the Malta Street and then make your way to the light. So adding this hotel here is going to add a problem there. You also have a crosswalk used pretty heavily there by people when the weather is nice. And I understand not putting a light there, but you are going to put a little more duress there for people walking across. And even with the islands, with the jogging path, most of us residents know that when we pull up there, you have to be vigilant because somebody comes running across there and they will come right in front of your car because you won't see them until the last second. People that don't live there are not going to know that. 
actually. This is, this is a wonderful hotel program. I mean, as far as what it looks like, and yet I just don't understand the idea of shoehorning it into an area surrounded by wetlands, floodplain, a playground, a, you have Larson Lake on the other side there, which I'm sorry, if I'm staying at the hotel and I have to look out my room and see that lake, I'm not coming back because that's really gross. The thing is in sad, sad shape. And I don't know what, you know, you have that lake there and then you have the other lakes on the side that are supposed to take runoff. Does anybody know what the effect on them is going to be when you put this here? That's something to think about. You, you've, got, you've got a very small area. You have no access to any Glen Road except off a subdivision road. And now you're only going to get one way out of there. You have a road that's built basically for normal traffic. I have no idea what you're going to do when you do construction. Are you going to take the uh, islands out in order to get heavy trucks in? I work in the heavy equipment business. There's not enough room to turn the truck in there. It's going to be hard. Construction, are you going to shut that down? Are you going to make everybody in the knolls use other exits? I mean, it's without having access, direct access to Andy Glynn, you seem to add an awful lot of duress to the street and add a lot more weight, a lot more issues. Um, I've seen, I went online and I've seen Home Two Suite hotels. They look really nice. They look really cool. They're really nice to stay at. And I did not find one that was put in an area like this. Usually they are put in the heavy commerce areas where they have access directly to the road. So when people are driving up, they're gonna be able to get to them easily. They're not put in by residents. They're not put into an area that's a heavy watershed for the community. So this is kind of a unique setting for a home to sleep. I'm not gonna argue with the point whether or not we need it. I think we argue at the point whether or not we need it right there. Another thing you can, you can ask yourself, and somebody else brought this up, but I'll say it for you. I don't know what the rules are as far as who stays at one, but there are certain elements who are normally required to report to the city when they move into your city. People who have to register as sex offenders are they, do they have to register in an extended stay? Do they have to let you know they're in your town? You have a playground that's in 250 feet. You have the jogging path, you have the area across. There's, there's a lot of issues I think with this uh, hotel being in this area. I can understand the fact that they want to put it on a main street coming off the expressway, make it easy for people to find. But there are other properties along any Glidden that are open. This is like trying to fit a size 12 foot into a size 10 shoe. It really doesn't fit here. Uh, anyway. Uh, there was one other comment I had to make here. But. Anyways. Oh. Who's the engineer? You, you are. Okay. You've got your exit door in here. What's the height going to be in perspective to the rest of the road? Is it going to be higher than the rest of the road? We're going to have to get up and speak. Up. Okay. So what happens yes. with the water runoff? Okay. Oh, you mean you're not going to have all your water runoff into your parking lot? Not going to happen. I don't, I don't know who threw that. Sir. Mark. Could you, you need to speak at the microphone. Yeah, could you go to the microphone so we can hear you? Thanks. We'll get a remote here. We're getting a second microphone, but right now you guys have to share well, it. Thank you for that. That's it's the last one I got for you. We have a, uh, there'll be a storm sewer system within the site that will collect it and take it to the detention basin. <coughs> so, I'm sorry, we didn't, I didn't catch about the slope you were So, saying. the entrance into the site will slope up 
is okay. what he was asking relative to the road. And so as you enter the site, it'll it'll go up. Okay. Thank you. Before we move to the next ones, Joel Joellen's getting a microphone in case we need to have you answer questions. So if you're just gonna take That's okay. Jeff, can you turn my microphone up just a little bit, please? They're having a hard time hearing me. Thank you. Would you like this for the team? Uh, yeah, in case we have any other questions for them. It just makes it a little easier. Thanks, Joel. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so our next one is Don Flippin. Mr. Brown, is that better? Is my microphone better for you guys? Okay, thank you. It's much better. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Dawn Flippin. Um, my address is 601 Larson Lane and Inman Knowles, not that far from this development. Um, my main concern, actually, the gentleman just brought it up. My understanding is hotels are not under any obligation to inquire as to the status of their guests, nor do their guests have to reveal their statuses. So you could have um, people that are on the sex offender registry staying overlooking the park because my understanding of this development is that it would face the park and I know that at some of the community meetings you know statements were made of oh it's gonna cost this much money and so that will keep that type of element out but that's not a valid statement because just a quick look at the Chronicles headlines you'll see that people that you wouldn't think of as that type of person there, there's things in there about you know um, a, a child porn case involving a pastor. Our last superintendent was has been um, accused of revenge porn. So you can't identify a person just by looking at them. So you're, you're proposing putting this right across the street from a park and near the jogging paths. Um, the other thing is, is that numerous times it's been said that this is for corporate guests. So they're going to be moving around, I would assume, at a lot of the same times that we are trying to move around to get to and from work the other thing is is that you're also competing then with the school buses. And if you've ever gotten caught behind a school bus trying to make the left onto Annie Glidden Road to go to the high school, that's not always fun because not only are you trying to share because you've got the, the buses coming through for the high school earlier in the morning and later in the morning you've got the buses for the elementary schools. And you've got the bus for the middle school too, so I think that one goes around the other way. But you're still sharing the road with them too. So there's a lot of us that are trying to get out of the subdivision at the same time. So I don't know, I know that they've said that they've, you know, somebody said that it's been talked about with police and fire and all of that in terms of how they would get in there. But has the school district been taken into account and how it's going to affect them? The other thing is, is that with the proposed entrance, the only way to get that equipment in there, I don't understand how you could do it without shutting down that entrance, which I understand would be for a limited amount of time but you're talking about rerouting first responders and again, the school buses, the kids that drive themselves to school. So you're forcing that traffic elsewhere. And I, we don't, you're forcing it back through the subdivision to where it's not used to being. So that was, that's it, thank you. Thank you. Our next request is, and I'm sorry if I do not get this name correct, D. Smigilski. Oh, okay. That's okay. So since we have a quick break, we did get comments um, that I don't know if all of us had an opportunity to read them before we started. So while we're waiting for Mr. Smigilski, if you all need to take a moment to read those comments that came in. Um, now is probably a good time. I know there was, I did not get a chance to read them before we started, so I was going to ask for a break to, for us to be able to have a chance to gloss over those really quickly anyway. Um, as Dan had mentioned, we got a comment from the DeKalb Chamber, um, John Laskowski, and then also um, an email from Sydney and Kyle Zoom, it looks like. So um, if you did not 
we will take a moment um, to make, I wanna make sure you guys read that over. Mr. Snigilski, go ahead and come on up. I hope I pronounced your name right. If I didn't, I apologize. not knowing how to pronounce some things. <laughs> My name's Dennis Miguelski. I live at 1220 Knowles Avenue South, right next to where they proposed this monstrosity. I bought into the Knowles, though I buy a house, my first house, maybe make some money after the recession. I had to fight through that to save my house. Now I saved it. Now you're telling me I gotta wait 15 more years because my house value is gonna go down. I don't feel that's right. To, you know, if somebody who sold a lot wants to pay everybody who's affected by this a check every year for the, 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 the amount that we're gonna lose, fine. Let's do that. But why should I, you know, I bought into this community, I moved out here from the western suburbs further west to buy into this. Now you're telling me that like in my senior years, I'm 67 years old, I gotta be 82 years old to make my money back? It's not right, you, you people are wrong. Throw this thing out the window. It's surrounded by forest preserve and county property. It's, you know, it's just not right, you cannot do this. If you do this, it's on your shoulders, you're wrong. You know, what's gonna happen when this thing goes under? You're gonna move it to section eight and have like low income people moving in this joint? You got one right there. They passed that other hotel behind closed doors. They're going, we're gonna let you know. Next week we'll come in. No, everybody got a paycheck, it was done. It was a done deal, it was a closed deal. We had no say so. I don't want that to happen now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that's all the comment sheets that I have. Oh, come on up. That's okay. You can go ahead and go to the podium. Yeah, if you'll state your name and address. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Gary Skinner and we live at 1279 Mason Street in the Knoll. Is there any other sites that are being considered for this? This hotel? Ian Decal? Does someone have the microphone? No, there are not. There are not. <clears throat> well, I have some suggestions or some ideas anyway. <clears throat> right up town there, there's a footprint that Show Dean started out in. Uh, you could stick it up in that uh, place there. Uh, you wouldn't have to even screw with the uh, zoning. Uh, you could partner up with the university who's hurting for money. These people that are going to come here are people that are staying long term. Is that my understanding? A couple weeks? Two or three weeks? No, they can stay from anywhere from one day to several the weeks. Rest of Same their thing lives. with the Hampton. They okay. can stay from one day to several weeks. Okay. Any hotel. Uh, th uh, to me, this seems uh, quite premature in even considering this at this time without having those two uh, properties uptown up and running and see how that they are received and how they are uh, um, occupied, whether that's going to fly. And uh, also, uh, I don't know why you would want to get so far up into the, the residential area when you can put something down closer to the interstate. I mean, that's, uh, it just makes sense to me. People are going to want to get off and, uh, and stay down there. And you, won't, you wouldn't have to uh, mess with people's uh, lives in this, uh, this thing coming up off here and coming into this hotel off of that little entrance into the Knolls there is, is ridiculous. And uh, I just think that this would be a big mistake. But, uh, where the Hampton is there, there's enough growth and where you can hardly see it from where we are stationed over there in the, in the uh, residential area. And that's fine. 
I'm not sure that we even needed that one. We've got a Super 8 or something down there. It looks like it was sent for and couldn't come because nobody's staying down there. Anyways, uh, I'm just uh, up here to tell you that I, I strongly do not want this thing in my neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, do you guys need a couple of minutes to read the comments? Are you, are you ready to start our discussion? Good. You're good? Yeah, You're good? good? Okay. We are not closing the public portion um, at this moment, um, but I do want to turn over um, any comments or questions to the commissioners. Um, and I'll start down. Vicki, do you have anything? Maybe you could address the process you went to to come up with this particular site as opposed to some of the suggestions we've had. My question is closer to 88 perhaps on Peace Road or Annie Glidden and how you came up with this site. You can go ahead and go up to yep. the podium. Actually, why do you come up to the podium? But don't take that with you. Don't don't, don't take the microphone with you. With you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll squeak. It makes a really <laughs> cool. <laughs> it makes a really cool noise, does it? Yeah. yeah. If okay. you could state your name and address. Sure. Please. My name is Albert Hill, and uh, I have an office in Dixon, Illinois, and uh, we also participated in the Hampton Inn when we built that as well. And um, Part of the reason, uh, of course, the market study played out and proved our location choice a, as a good one. One of the things that is key to any hotel is, believe it or not, the signage you put on interstates is very important. And the only way we could get signage is you have to be on Annie Glidden in order to, be, to get that kind of signage out on the interstate where you can put the signs up. That is very valuable. The other thing is it's a major road into the uh, university and the NIU and that's of course important as well uh, there are certain advantages to having both hotels close together um, and you know if you look at the original planning of the entire subdivision there this was always meant oh. uh -oh. it's it's the sound yeah okay there we go it was always meant to be used as a commercial use I mean and if you had to pick one as a 7-Eleven or gas stations or many other things that could go in there, this probably has the least amount of traffic flow of any of those. Um, we've built over 100 hotels. We've studied these all over. I have own one in Dixon. And the way the flow comes in in the evening, they, they start maybe 4 in the afternoon, a few dribble in, and 5 and 6, a few come in. And it doesn't even peak. Your parking lot's not full till about 10 o'clock. You know, business people go out and have business meetings and stuff like that, so they're not even coming back. You know, the, the traffic flow is very... Sp Would you please be quiet while I'm talking? Would S someone ask that person to be quiet while I'm addressing? Sir, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Um, and so th that's part of the reasons why we picked that spot and um, any other particular questions on that? Did that answer your question, Vicki? <coughs> kind of. Okay. <laughs> it Not directly. I just wondered if you looked at Peace and N88 because that's a ripe area for development. It has a brand new Casey's gas station a few a mile away. I just wondered if that that was considered. Can you not put signage on 88 and Peace Road? Well, you know, NIU is a very important part of our business. Mm -hmm. uh, there's times that we may have three-fourths of the rooms of the Hampton because of NIU. And when you're driving down the interstate, what does it say to use for NIU? It says use Anzi Annie Gladen Road. So. Your turn. Your turn. I don't know why I was thinking. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, I, I, I honestly don't don't feel, I mean, there are a sort of bunch of minutiae questions that I could ask, and, and um, I don't see the point in view of the much bigger question, which is why here? Mm -hmm. um, and, and not so much um, why here, but why just next to an existing hotel, for example? Um, and I'm, I'm a big believer in, in, in um, diversification of investment, and that takes many, many forms, including the location of multiple hotels in a given city. Um, so I'm, I'm somewhat surprised by the fact that we're going to put one hotel side by side with another, considering that there are, uh, it seems that we have an audience here and potentially a commission that is willing to think and imagine other places where this can go. Um, 
my question again is is an echo of what Ms. Buckley asked, so I'm therefore not going to ask that question again. Yeah, I I have a few questions. Um, what is the Hampton in the average occupancy? Currently, we're at eighty-five percent. So every day. That's for the full year. For the last. So usually we're, we're sold out about four to five days a week, eight months out of the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, the jobs that you expect to have in the new hotel, do they pay a living wage? I mean, if this is an improvement for the city of DeKalb, so it would be very helpful if the jobs pay a living wage. Yes, they do. They do all of the jobs? Not all of the, the jobs. The maids and no, everything? No, not all of the jobs. Okay. Um, uh, I drive down that street a lot, and I agree with the homeowners. It's not easy to get in and out. I don't, I don't live there, but I have friends who live there, and trying to take a left any time of the day onto any Glidden is sometimes really impossible. Sometimes I really take a right and go around and try. And I don't know, maybe your traffic study showed that somehow, but that's, and maybe what I say is just anecdotal, but I think uh, people who live in the North have had that experience. And I don't know if you asked them, did you ask the homeowners, uh, did you query the homeowners? Um, in, in the Knowles about the traffic situation? Uh, I do not, um, we typically do not, and mm -hmm. I was not at the present at the meetings. Um, we perform our study based on standards accepted in the industry, like IDOT, the IDOT and, yeah. long, and your city. And I don't disagree. Sometimes you have to wait to make a left out of there. It's no different when you make a left out onto 38 or any other location. What our study has shown that the time you have to wait is within the acceptable standards within the industry. That yeah, you may have to wait 20, 25 seconds, but that's still considered acceptable within our industry. So there is sufficient capacity. It does work at an acceptable level of service, similar to what you would find at many locations along a road similar to Annie mm -hmm. Glidden. Um, more importantly, the accident data shows that it's working well. It's not a safety issue. Um, but yeah, anytime you make a left onto a four-lane road, it can be difficult and you have to wait. But there's accepted standards that we have to look at. And we looked at it and it shows that it's a level of service C, which is really good. And um, your staff has reviewed it, your consultant has reviewed it, and has agreed with our findings. But mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Um, I did not completely understand your comment about the signage. Does it have to be on any Glidden in order to be that there is a sign on the interstate? Yeah. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But the signage is what you see, the, the blue signs on the interstate yeah. as you come mm -hmm. up. Yeah, and so, I believe so you have to be on that road to be able to get that signage on. So if you're you on the blue signage that yes. says uh, so it will tell you logic. so many gas stations logic. are available mm -hmm. or hotels or attractions. Are you sure? Because I've been I just went to Kansas and it said McDonald's and I had to drive three miles to find so the McDonald's. Different state. It might be different in different states. Um, that was still in this Illinois. this ain't Kansas. Oh. <laughs> huh? El Illinois Tollway is very fussy on that. You have to be s just so far off the tollway. But even more important, if you're driving down 88, remember how they have the big directional sign that says, for NIU traffic, yeah. use Annie Glidden. There, there's that plus the signage of the individual hotel sign that can only be there if you're coming off of Annie Glidden. Okay. Then one other question I have. I'm, I'm sorry, oh, Katarina. I'm sorry. I have to ask the audience to please quiet down a little bit. It's difficult for us to hear up here when you all are talking and we need to be able to hear what they're saying to us and the questions that we're asking of them. So I would appreciate it. Thank you. And then 
one final question. I mean, I have a lot more questions, but um, how do you alleviate the homeowner's fears about the falling property value? Is that a city comment or is that the, okay. Well, that you ask them, right? Yeah. As far as I know, that lot has always been zoned for commercial use, and it's been for sale for 20 years. Um, out of the multiple things that could come there, gas station, strip mall, coffee house, apartment complex, the hotel will probably be the least impact on property values. Um, what helps property values is economic growth, um, better schools, and jobs, right? The hotel is contributing 160,000 to the school district. Um, it's gonna bring in, you know, hopefully more jobs. So um, in the end, I'm hoping that this will help the economy more than anything else that could be in that location. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, given the amount of information, additional information we got tonight, I, I'm not sure. And, prepared to ask a, a really good questions at this point. Um, I would like to go back out there and take a look at it now, hearing some of the questions or the comments that have been made and some of the things that have been brought up by the applicant. I, I do have two concerns that will kind of revolve around that, and that is, is the traffic and uh, the, the volumes that, and particularly the particularly for school buses that was mentioned earlier um, and how that will be impacted and those conflicts that might arise. And I'm also, I have to admit, somewhat concerned about the playground. Is a neighbor, nice neighborhood park going to suddenly become a, an open field for, you know, people that are staying at a hotel? Mm -hmm. Not saying that that's not right or that's not possible, um, but it, it does change the makeup mm -hmm. of the, the park at that point. Mm -hmm. And is there gonna be, and I haven't had a chance to look at the details of the landscaping, is there gonna be buffering between that, the park and mm -hmm. this? What kind of, is it just the landscaping? Is it fencing? And, and what will that look like? That, that, those are my two biggest concerns. I, I just like to give a little bit more consideration okay. to it before making any decisions. Okay, so I do have a couple of questions. Um, Excuse me, I was told to come up here for a second. I don't have a TV in there, but if you have any questions about the highway signs, uh, how you qualify to get a highway sign, anybody could ask me that. You don't have to be on that main road. You don't have to be on Annie Glidden to have a I'm highway sorry. sign. I'm sorry, can you pull your microphone down and identify who okay, you are? Okay, I'm sorry, oh. I'm Vicki uh, Torres, I GM from Red Roof, and I had to go okay. through the process with IDOT to get the sign put on 88. Okay. It was a process. They have to measure how far you are, you don't have to be on the main street, you can't, you can't be more than five miles from the exit okay. of 88. Um, there's a fee, I mean, there's, there's a large fee to be on there, but they do a study, IDOT, it takes forever. I think it took me probably almost a year to get approved. Our other hotels tried to, in Sycamore too, they were denied because it's too far. But you have to be within five miles and you don't have to be on Annie Glidden. I have one out there too, and I'm on 38. Okay, that's good to know, thank mm -hmm. you, Vicki. Thank you. Um, so I do have a couple of questions that I, don't know if it would be for you, Mark. It might be. Um, the islands and the medians, can you explain that a little more? What exactly What exactly are you doing with those islands and medians that are at that entrance? Are you taking them out and then you're redoing that? Can you explain that a little more? So currently, if you look at this drawing up here where the dashed, uh, my arm was a little bit longer, but the dashed line represents where the curb and gutter is right now. Okay. Oh. And the shaded area represents where we're going to pave. So, oh, thank you. So right here, this will be the new curb and gutter. 
and the shaded area will be the new pavement. So this is this is our new turn lane that we're proposing. Okay. The city staff had a few comments sure. on that that we still need to address this taper length, but we just got those on Friday and I haven't had a chance to work on that yet. But so then, what else is going to happen with that median? Are you so they're going to take out the landscaping there has gotten pretty tall, right? So the landscaping will be replaced with low growth okay. landscaping so that site distance won't be impacted. Okay. So then the question that has been brought up about the time during construction, mm -hmm. will those islands come out before construction begins and then they'll be, that'll be the last thing that will happen? How well, the, the, islands are, about that? the islands are not being completely removed. We're okay. just adding a turn lane to right. the easternmost one. And then taking the vegetation out and Correct. replacing it with some Correct. Other. Um, as far as the staging, I guess we really haven't, gotten to that point okay. yet um, because the comments that have been made are you know bringing the big heavy machinery in yeah. there and that is a pretty tight yeah when you come in there and then having to make that sharp block yeah so, so if that's a request from the city we could work with the contractor to have them do that first to make turning movements easier <laughs> okay. into the site okay um, a question was brought up about the effect on the runoff into the retention pond. So can you talk a little bit about that to answer that question? Sure, so we have a storm sewer system that we're proposing on site that'll be sized for a 100 year storm event that will carry the storm water to the detention basin. The detention basin will outlet to the, uh, the creek there on the south side. Mr. Pitzel, a question about the amount of time that an individual can stay in the hotel. I know it's extended stay, and I'm asking this. I know you mentioned it really briefly. Um, in your presentation, it mentioned from one to seven nights. Yes. But then there is the ability for someone to stay. Is yes. there a limit? Uh, actually, with, with any hotel, even extended stay or the Hampton or Red Roof, you can stay as long as you want up to I think it's 30 days before you got a I think the tax is waived but extended stay doesn't mean that they're required to stay an extra length of time they can stay one day extended stay nowadays just means that there's a kitchen provided in each room so they don't want to you know a corporate traveler that, that travels five days a week doesn't want to eat out five days a week so they want to be able to cook their own meal maybe once or twice a week that's the only difference my brother travels a lot, and I know he stayed at extended stays up to three weeks, I believe. Yeah, and we have people that stay at the. Uh, sorry, we have okay. people that stay at the Hampton for thirty days, okay. as well. So, it, and it's not an extended stay, but you can stay that long if you want. Okay. Okay. It, that's with any hotel. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other further questions before I open one one moment, please? Uh, hold one moment, please. I'll I. Let the public speak one more time, but I want to give us a chance in case there was any more questions. So I'll give you a minute. Just a minute. Do you guys have anything else before I open it back I have up? A quick question. Yeah. I have a quick question. Who currently owns this land? It is owned by Elmer Larson Incorporated. So it's a private oh. unit. That's his property owner. Okay. Thank you. I think Mr. Larson's here. If Representing the owner, anything more to add to? If if you could go to the podium, could you go to the podium, please, <laughs> or the microphone yeah, either yeah. way? At one point in time, we owned the entire 264 acres. We did subdivided it into the streets and the design. Although some of the design of the streets, particularly the ones that you're talking about, weren't our design that we wanted, but was insisted on by a previous mayor. Thank you. I'm gonna try this one more time and I'm gonna address Mr. Patel. In your original presentation, you had said your primary would be the businesses, the business parks, that this would put it 
So DeKalb and Sycamore's business parks, business travelers, corporate travelers could use it. So again, I'm gonna ask it as about as direct as I can. Why not Peace Road? Um, I think we looked at a couple different locations, but also the cost of the land prohibits the project from being feasible. Yeah. Right. Thank you for the direct answer. Of course. Okay, anyone else before I open it back up? No? Okay. So if there are any further comments, if anyone else has something, come back up to the podium, please. And all you have to do is just state your name if you've been on the before. Dennis Megelski. Um, now you're saying the runoff from this hotel is gonna go into that little stream. That's a feeder to the Kishwaukee River where all the fish come up and spawn in the back of my yard. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And then they get washed out and they feed the Kishwaukee River with fresh fish. Now you're telling me all this oil and asphalt and oil from the cars is gonna run right down into that. And you're telling me that's good for our neighborhood. Come on, you gotta be kidding me. I don't know what's going on, but it, this is not right. You cannot let this thing go through. Just because somebody makes a million bucks and he can like push everything through like he did that other hotel, it's just not right. You know, you gotta have some sensibility and some coop. You know what I mean? Just think about what you're doing. This is a little patch of land. By Peace Road, they got open land. It's not expensive as they're putting it. You know, for a million dollars, you could buy 10 acres over there. So don't give me this stuff. You know what I mean? I lived it for 20 years. Like I said, I wanted to make a buck. You're making me lose money. What am I supposed to do? I'm going to move out of this town if that's the way you guys are going to treat your citizens. Um, Kara Carlson, I'm at 1223 Mason. So I'm the lot 146 that's shown there in the corner. Uh, I just bought in December and um, we pretty much moved in, my family, it's me and two kids in February, both high schoolers. Um, as kind of a mother hen, I could watch my children leave. My son would drive my daughter to school and I have counted eight minutes where they have waited to make that left turn behind a school bus in two cars. And unfortunately or fortunately for this, I have the tardies to document how hard it is to get out of the neighborhood. Um, so I can definitely testify that is going to be a problem. Um, I'd also like to say I've lived in Devonair and Kensington and the Knowles and I really love Knowles, just the feeling of it, backing up to the park, having the corner lot. And yes, I know it's zone commercial and you know eventually something could possibly come and we have to kind of take the, the worst case scenario of you could get a gas station or, or yada yada. But again, I am concerned by the fact that, you know, you are directly across from the park and the issues that could potentially be from there. Um, two, you know, the studies show that you will lose value in your home and not get it for 10 to 15 years. And I can say, you know, we don't, this is our livelihood. This is my investment. I don't have another business property where I can take the risk and make money. So, you know, really to say to your residents, hey, you know, I know when you come to DeKalb, you kind of got to, you know, the taxes are high, but this is a big ask of your citizens to say, you know, now absorb this, take on the traffic, take on the safety, lose your property value. In 10 or 15 years, you can get it back. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. I think, again, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but just plop it into a neighborhood. It just, it doesn't make sense. And I just have, I'm not sure, I guess it's just a question in general, but when you, several of you asked questions about why other properties weren't looked at, and depending on who answered, the responses were conflicting, so I guess I'm confused why we need it right here, because you'll have one gentleman who says, we need it because 88 says for, for NIU, take Annie Glidden, but then somebody else says, no, we want corporate people, Nestle and Monsanto. Those are two very different things. 
And so I don't understand who this is supposed to be and why it needs to be right here. I, I, if the studies show that DeKalb needs it, great, but I don't think that this is the right place for it. And I think that it is gonna cause more problems than I think that, that a simple traffic study can show because you're looking, like you said, they're looking at it at peak hours. That, that's not necessarily the same for all of us. You've got school buses that go through at two different times because you've got a bunch of different schools starting at different times. You've got people starting at different hours of the day. And when one of the gentlemen said that a lot of these lots don't fill back up until 10 o'clock at night, we don't need cars coming back in at 10 o'clock at night. There's people that, it's, it's a neighborhood. It doesn't belong here. But I'm, I guess I'm confused as to the, the documentation that we were provided at the different um, open houses and the statements here tonight of what this is really for. Is it for Northern or is it for the corporate businesses? Thank you. I'm Steve Brown. Um, the gentleman said that when they were looking at other properties, there was nothing else. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but there are two properties for sale by Schnucks. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> we're even. <laughs> but uh, if I'm not mistaken, there are two properties for sale by Schnucks. One south of Schnucks and one uh, is actually part of their, right on Annie Glidden is part, I think it's about two acres, which by the time you get done putting a retention fence in is all you have to work with there anyways. Did, was there any consideration to them? They have immediate access to any Glidden. Somebody coming to find your hotel doesn't have to worry about looking for a residential suite. Um, it would seem to fit all your criteria, and it's already an area that has stores and a place for restaurants and stuff to be, so, and a golf course across the street. So if you're a corporate person, that ought to be a really good idea. And another thing, when we talk about traffic, and this may seem kind of silly to some people, but being that my house backs up to Annie Glidden, something I see all the time is a lot of wildlife, including deer, especially in them islands. I mean, I have counted at one time 17 deer walk through my backyard. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of wildlife in that area, and people, again, visiting, and they're used to being there, are not gonna know that. It's just going to add a little bit. It's just another small element. And, and yes, we knew when we moved in, it, something would probably go there. It was zoned light commercial. I don't think any of us realized that there wasn't access to Annie Glenn Road. I wouldn't have thought of it. You know, I mean, I see a, a lot there. I figure you can put a, a you know, an entrance there. You wouldn't think of that. But a four-story hotel is not what I would consider light commercial. I don't think anybody who bought a house and moved in ever thought a four-story hotel was considered commercial, light commercial. So that's about all I have. Thank you very much for your time tonight and the opportunity. Appreciate it. Hi, my name is Paul Knesny. I'm at uh, 1226 Knowles Avenue South, the second house um, from the whole building right here. So uh, I, I go to work uh, out of state pretty much uh, every other night and uh, stay at a hotel all the time. And uh, I think like he was saying, uh, going to uh, properties by Schnucks would be a lot better being that you guys have kitchens and being able to cook at a kitchen and walking to Schnucks to get your groceries to cook at the kitchen rather than driving over there just on my own personal aspect of uh, doing it every day for eight years with my work. I don't know if everybody else goes out of town as much as I do. And uh, then the safety aspect of again, I go out of town all the time I, I leave my uh, wife and kids at home all the time and know that they're overly safe in the knolls. We've never had any issue at all. And uh, they go to the park all the time and would uh, rise concern 
having a massive hotel right next door to the park for all the issues everyone's talked about today. That's all I want to say. Definitely opposed. Thank you. The two individuals that spoke before you leave tonight, if you could fill out, um, sorry, is it this form? The speaker request form, just so we've got your information. I'd appreciate it. Anyone else that would like to speak? Okay. Commissioners. no further comments or questions I would take a motion to whatever you would like to do this evening is your thought actually I do have to ask this is your thought to continue with this so that we have an opportunity to do that one and to, that would be to my see preference. it again yeah. I just need to know this whether or not to close the public hearing that, that is generally my preference, but let me actually take a minute here and ask uh, City just to give us a bit of an education on, on the process. Um, I think any person can come to the City of DeKalb and, and have a proposal of this nature, and they come to the City and, and they ask for their help in, in dotting the T, I'm sorry, crossing the T <laughs> and dotting the I's. Okay. Um, and um, it, it is their right to propose the property in the development where they want it. Correct. They are, of course, I'm sure, open to suggestions of other places. The knowledge of the city, or more of the knowledge of the city rests in the city staff uh, than necessarily somebody coming from outside, although they are not necessarily outsiders. Um, and, then, and then it comes to us, and then it, and we, we present a recommendation to the city council who makes the final decision. Is there anything else that you want to add to that process? I, ju I just want to make sure that we all understand the process. Yeah, Everything. that's correct. I mean, the, they came to the city proposing this, and I think we have to focus on what they're requesting at this location, if they meet the findings of fact or not for rezoning and planned development. So we're going to focus on this site, not other sites. Correct. This request is for this particular property. So as you go forward with the recommendation, then we look at their proposal and how it does or does not meet the findings. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let me just, are you done? Well, I was just going to say that, it, uh, I mean, just from the staff report, it sounds like there are some T's that need to be crossed out and, and, yeah. and I's to be uh, dotted. We're recommending continuation. And the therefore, the continuation, that would give more time. Um, so I, I'm, that's my, what I came up with. Um, I'll make a motion. Okay. Okay. I move that the public hearing for a zoning map amendment from the LC Light Commercial District to the PD-C Plan Development <coughs> Commercial District and approval of a plan development plan for a home to suites by Hilton Hotel to be located at the southwest corner of Knowles Avenue South and South Annie Glidden Road be continued to the August 8, 2018 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to be held in the City Council Chambers at DeKalb Municipal Building 200 South Fourth Street, DeKalb, Illinois, at 6 p.m. So, motion by Near. Second. Second by Buckley. Any discussion? Roll call. Katharina Barbie. Yes. Vicki Buckley. Yes. David Castro. Yes. Deborah Near. Yes. Jerry Wright. Chair Christina Doe. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, so we will. Continue this on April 8th. August. 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 Oh. <laughs> the other A. <laughs> no, I don't want winter here yet. Uh -uh. So, all right, nope. it's got to find my place. Hmm. All right. Christina? Yes. Can I make a strange off? topic comment. Go right ahead as I'm trying to find my page. I would just like to take note and commend you for bringing your children and teaching them the processes that go into a community. I think it's great. Yeah. They can tell. <laughs> okay, now that I found my page. Thank you. 
Okay, so the second oh, cool. item is a public hearing. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, well. We're going to hang tight just a second. Yeah, I know, me too. <laughs> you have to call me and I'll call you. Text. I'm going to Duncan. Want one? So we kind of keep seeing you separately. We'll, we'll just pass it. Yeah, I'll right. meet you at the car. Oh, here you I go. Just hand off. Drive. It's going to go far. Don't be so busy. I'm I'm here. here you go. I've got it for you. All right. Extra large black. Oh. <laughs> large six cream six Splenda. <laughs> Every morning. My husband's from Boston, and that's where it all started. Yeah. Patient. Okay. Sorry. Thank you wow. for being patient. No problem. Yes, thank you. All right, ready? Public hearing. Um, our, our second item is a public hearing. It's a petition by KV and Sons LLC, DeKalb 2, applicant and owner, requesting an amendment to special use ordinance number 2016. Six dash. Let me do that over. Two zero one six. That's difficult. Two zero one six dash zero zero six to modify the wall signage regulations on the building located at four 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 dash four six zero East Lincoln Highway. Thank you for um, hanging tight with us tonight, yeah. and uh, the petitioner is here to present to us. Hi, my name is Deepak Patel. I'm manager for 444-460 East Lincoln Highway, uh, new building. Uh, we have like a building is fully occupied with uh, all the retail business. Uh, with all retail business, city will generate approximate 25 to 30,000 a year in tax revenue. Uh, and that one, new tenant Dunkin Donuts, now it's called only Dunkin. And their proposal is to have another sign on east side, so we are requesting to reduce the common menu size. Common, yeah, this size is a. There's a MAG few slides ahead which oh yeah. shows existing. Oh, yeah. okay. So we are. Uh, this is a uh, nine by eight sign. We are reducing this sign to eight by uh, eight by six. So almost like seven, uh, twenty-five percent reduced. And instead of that one, they are looking for to add another sign over here on the east side, like this one. This is front. Oops. Oops. Oh, where's the front? On that bar up there. Here. Okay. So they want to add another sign oh. on the east side. So the giving total, we are reducing total square footage from the common sign there's and giving front. some square footage to add on east side. Okay. That's all. That's all? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and have a seat. Thank you. And I open this one to the city. Uh, thank you. Um, so this building was constructed in 2017. In 2016, there was a special use permit approved 
uh, for the drive through proposed for the Dunkin' Donuts at that time. Currently, there's a Subway, Marco's Pizza, and DeKalb Liquor in the building. So a Dunkin' will go on the east side. In that ordinance from 2016, there were standards regarding uh, signage um, on the building. And there was a max square footage for the signs on Lincoln Highway, um, which are complying with. And then on the east side, facing 5th Street, there was a um, proposed to be a multi-tenant sign of max of 80 square feet. And they installed the multi-tenant sign at about 72 square feet. Uh, Duncan would like to have their own sign on that east side on that beam. And what the applicant's proposing is to reduce, take down the existing multi-tenant sign, put up a new one with all the tenants on there, but smaller in size. And then with the Dunkin' Donuts sign, the combined square footage will be 78 square feet, still under the uh, max allowed of 80 square feet. So instead of two sign, uh, one sign, there'll be two signs, but uh, pretty much the same square footage. Uh, and we can show the detail there of how the new multi-tenant sign will look with all the uh, four tenants up there. So <laughs> the ordinance was specific in how many signs and the size allowed on the east side. It only allowed one sign. So with the two signs, they had to amend the special use and with the detail uh, that the elevation on that side will change regarding the signs too. So um, uh, we'd recommend approval. Uh, it would meet the, it does meet the UDO standard now for wall signs. So uh, there's 80 foot of frontage on that side of Fifth Street and the max size per the UDO is one times the frontage of the building. So, uh, so that's why the amendment, because they were changing the number of signs from uh, one to two, which did change the what was approved in that ordinance. So we do recommend approval. Mm -hmm. Meets all the findings of fact for special use. Doesn't change what was approved before regarding the findings for that special use. Uh, and then there's a sample motion um, provided. And I did hand out the uh, detail of the sign showing it up on that beam there. That's exactly where it will be. I think the Dunkin' Donuts is planning to come in in August. Is that correct? And the sign on Lincoln Highway is, uh, they're proposing is, that's not part of the approval, that's, is allowed within the square footage allowed on Lincoln Highway. Adding this sign, this sign on this side, mm -hmm. east side. Okay. Okay, so, um, Given that this is a public hearing, I do have to open it up. And if there's anyone in the audience that would like to comment or has questions, you're welcome to come to the podium. I'm going to make note that there's one individual in the office or in the the audience who has said he has no comments. So I'm going to turn to the commissioners for any comments or questions. No, no comments. No question. Easy question. Is this a lit sign? Yes, it's under LED lit sign. Only on one side, not the back side. Okay. What do you mean by not the back side? Could, could you go to the podium? Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's lit on the front side, not the back side. Okay. okay. Um, we don't have any restrictions on that. No. Is that correct? It's eternally illuminated. Yeah, there's no restrictions. This is not so flashing at all? No. no. <laughs> okay. Nope. Thank you. I do have a quick question, just for clarification in my head. So there will be a sign on Lincoln Highway that's already been approved? It's been approved, yes. Okay. okay. So this is just for the addition on the beam on the 5th Street side? Yeah, Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. I, I didn't have that straight in my head. We so. add it here for reference purpose, so that way we know what we are adding and what is existing. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to close the public portion, uh, uh, the public hearing portion of the meeting. And anything else from the commissioners? Any questions for the city? If not, I'll take a motion. I move. Oh. Do you have a question? No. no. Oh. So based upon the submitted petition and testimony presented, I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission forward its findings of fact and recommend to the city council approval of an amendment to special use ordinance number 
2016-006 to modify the wall signage regulations on the building to allow one multi-tenant wall sign in parenthesis, uh, in parenthesis uh, box sign and one tenant wall sign on the east side of the building not to exceed 78 square feet in total area for the subject property per design details attached as Exhibit A. A motion made by Barbie. Second. Second by Buckley. Any discussion? There being none, roll call please. Katharina Barbie. Yes. Vicki Buckley. Yes. David Castro. Yes. Deborah Neer? Yes. Jerry Wright? Chair Christina Doe? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Any reports? Yes, uh, a few things. The City Council at their last meeting passed an ordinance amending the terms for several of the boards, commissions, and committees in the city. And what they did, they wanted to, um, the mayor wanted to change the end of the terms from the end of June to the calendar year, similar to our city budget. So um, so all the terms, if you ended it in June, are now extended to the end of the year. I updated the list of commission members with the new terms, I handed that out to you tonight, so you have all list of that. And um, if there's any change in the information on there too, always let us know at the staff, we'll get those changed for you. So just wanna let you be aware of that. We should have a, at the next council meeting, a appointment up for consideration uh, for a new commission member. So um, that should be on Monday. And when they're approved, they'll be able to join us for the uh, next meeting. Um, next commission meeting course will be August 8th. We have the continued hearing for the video gaming operation on, on South 4th Street, which uh, was continued from last one. And of course, the continued hearing for the hotel from tonight. Um, that's all I had for any reports. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, so if there's nothing else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved by Buckley. Second. Second by Castro. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Very excited. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> Oh, don't get on by us, yes. I don't need to Thanks go to the opposite ends yeah. of the yeah. earth. Thank you.